okay y'all know from my other videos when I went in there with my scribe tool and set the uh, the radius height of the seat now just to refresh your memory I'm going to show you that again this is just a typical pilot that you do the valve job with and this right here is my uh, threaded cutter I actually made this tool myself a long time ago and what it does after the valve job has been completed it goes in there and it lays up against the seat and it scribes a line that is to be determined by me in, in whatever mathematical diameter or how far the radius is up or down and in this application right here this is a full race motor so it's going to have a radius unlike a lot of performance or street strip cars do but the reason I do this is it gives me a circumference up underneath the seat you can see the gray area in here which is the actual valve seat and how the line is right up underneath it I think I got enough zoom to show it and I'm going to show you now how I go in there and grind that out and lay it in so that it works with uh, airflow and, and, and lift at, at a higher RPM. Now remember, you go in here grinding on this iron seat. You better not get too happy with it because if you remove too much material, the seat will fall out of the head. But as y'all know on this uh, Promax head, y'all was with me when I uh, saw the head and we seen how not only how quality that the seats are, but how much crush they were put in with. So I have no fear going in here and chopping some on the seat to get rid of the angle because I know that I'm not going to have a problem out of this Promax head. I've cut some of the Dart and Brodex heads before and actually been more worried about them than what I am this right here. So let's go in here and cut on this iron seat and see what we can do. I'm coming at about 12 or 13 degrees inward from the bow from the bow seat. Keep in mind, I'm not cutting the aluminum, I'm cutting the actual iron seat. That's what I want you to know is I'm I'm actually cutting the iron seat itself. Now what you're going to feel when you do this is a big hump where the aluminum, you know, of course the cutter is going to touch the aluminum some, but it, it, it's changed the steep angle, which is what we was trying to do, and not have as much fillet or as much turning radius on a high RPM motor. But that's how I do it. I wouldn't go no more than about 15 degrees. You start putting more of an inclination into it, you can get yourself in trouble real quick. All right, I just wanted to show that part and how I do that for the bowl so that you know that this head's getting everything thrown at it that I can hit it with from raw material removal that is insane to cutting on the seats. Uh, okay, what we're going to do here right now is... Um, I've got a 202, which is a considerable amount smaller. There's a baby ridge on the intake. It's not too much. 
And all I'm going to do is go in here like so and knock that ridge down because as our air is turning, it hits that ridge, it can deflect and flow. Now the stone's just going to knock the rough outer edge part and then we're going to take the sand roll and go in there and hit it to uh, pull it down, but we'll have to do that without a valve. The reason I use the valve with a stone is the stone is a little bit more abrasive, therefore it can come in there and hit it and turn it. So um, basically this is just kind of like a rough end and then I'll go in there with my sand roll and touch it and have a nice little roll right into the combustion chamber. All right. All that work we did grinding on the harder seat is now going to pay off. Um, what I've got here is I've got my snap gauge set up. We're going to go in here and we're going to do a hit. Okay, that's pretty much a good measurement right there. And what we're going to end up with is a 1820, and that's at the tightest part. Now, the trick is to come up here and get the, this measurement right here as far down in the bowl as we can get for a release, which is 1940, okay? We're not going to get that, but we're probably going to get around 1900 out of it, so let's go ahead and see what we can come up with and how hard we can hit this thing to come up with what we need to come up with. It's just uh, amazing how much meat that they have put in this casting for you to be able to do this. Notice how I roll it right up to the edge of that hard seat. Man. That way in there, good. You couldn't ask for anything much better than that. So let's go in there now. Wow, that's uh, that's quite incredible. Let's get us a mid shot. I think we was about what 1810 to 1820 before, and now look at that 1919. And that's a good almost halfway down into the bowl. That is an amazing amount. Once again, one and nine nineteen from a one eight twenty. So that's a hundred thousandths clearing out that bowl and rolling it right up to the seat. That ought to make us some big yields on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and I'm gonna turn it on the short turn side and show you how far that I roll that back when I do this. All right. Okay, uh, on the short turn side, I've already went ahead and took a little bit of bulk material, but if we take the finger, and this kind of, with the blade pitch being closer, what it'll do is it'll just kind of smooth blend it. Remember, we're not wanting to let the die grinder 
go into the seat or move more aluminum material so that it's got an edge. And right now, it feels really good. That is a great roll right there. All right, so that's pretty much takes care of the bowl area. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bullet nose the guide some with a, with a different kind of tool. I'll let you see uh, that being done. It's pretty interesting. 